the Levels Network. I'm Justin Horner, joined by the Triple OG, Whittemy Mason, and the Undisputed <laughs> Podcaster. Lukey, podcaster of the world. We did it. Lukey Stowe. Um, so obviously, Lukey's our producer. People have been asking to see, you know, at least hear his voice. Yeah. Uh, we've gone one better. We've got him on camera today, but we've got a special announcement. Uh, there's something big happening in the podcast boxing world. So, Lukey. Give us some more information. Tell us about we the do. details. So there's a little fight night coming up, boys. Ooh. And they wanted you to get involved. Yeah. Who, Triple OG. Tri- Triple OG. Yeah. No, Everyone wants Triple OG for a yeah, boxing fight. You brushed 43, them. mate. Exactly. Jeez. So look. I'm, I'm out of my prime. <laughs> I've stepped up for the team. Yep. I'm, come, I'm getting out of my little glass box in there. I've been yeah. trapped. Yep. It's hot. you got air in here. Yeah, it's How nice. good is this? It's man. nice, yeah. But yeah, stepping up for the fight. Shout out to the boys at Alpha Blokes that are putting on a fight night. So we met them up at Magic Round. Yeah, great lads. Great lads are in the vlog. So they're putting yeah. on this big event, Gold Coast Convention Center. So is, it, is it Knuckles or is it the Alpha Blokes? Is Alpha so Knuckles, Knuckles is a part of it too. So okay. there's a, they've created like a company for it. So it's called the Podcast Royale, the couple of the biggest podcasts in the country. So <laughs> biggest podcast Who is this? in the country. Who are you fighting? Uh, he's from the casting couch. I he's think. building it up, mate. He's yeah. building. I, don't know. I want to know him. I want. Yeah. I want to start yeah. hating. Him. Don't I want to know. genuinely, <laughs> genuinely don't know him, yeah. and I want to hate him. No, nah, I'm not too sure of really who they are. They're from this podcast. I think it's called like the Casting Couch or something like that. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. like, I don't know if they're from getting Pornhub. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think they film out of their like their mum's basement. So, oh, right. I like yeah. that. I like that. Any, any nerves? Like, I know you've just been announced, but how are you feeling about? It? You excited? You nervous? Excited? Yeah, it's been a fun couple of months. Obviously, you did the marrow. Well, you did the marrow. I did the half. So, been trying to get healthy, get fit again. So, mm. it's another goal for you, right? Eh? Another goal. So, April twenty seven, Gold Coast Convention Center, Alpha Events, and Jamie Meyer Productions. When are, are you going to start your camp? Pretty much straight away. You in away. camp now? Well, not really now. But like how many times a week? After Derby Day. Let's yeah. get Terence Trent Derby Day out of the way. 100% after um, Derby But you would be locked in after that? Yeah. Six so weeks, be, six, eight weeks? No, what six was, months. So we've got plenty of time. Ages. Yeah, right. not stressed at all. Let's get him training with the great chain. Yeah, you got to get with Trent Langlands, mate. Yeah. yeah. He'll be uh, he be great for you. Movement and everything like that. The bloke won't know what's going to get him. Trains Harry Garside. Maybe you can get some tips from Harry doing yeah. some uh, some movement stuff well, together. We collab with Elab a heap of times. Yeah, so for I'm sure. sure that he can help yeah. you out. So we're yeah. doing heaps of stuff. The run club's obviously the best thing you can do for boxing. Yep. Is have yeah. good cardio. Yeah. So I'll be out trotting, not going out on a Friday as much as I have been. Bro, you, I mean, six months is a long time to know, yeah. but it's good to prep. Like, yeah, yeah. Just get you. But you've been prepping anyway for the last yeah. what? You're off the piss for three months. Three All months. you did was just get back in the lab, get your fitness right, get your health right. So yeah. you're mentally there. So that's great. 100%. So super excited, keen to get amongst it with the boys and like the Alpha Blokes, Bloody Brilliant Beers. Um, we've got Good We people. Mean Well, we've got the Reggie's Dead Ass Podcast, Almost a Man, Daily Blue, Marty and Michael. There's plenty of podcasts, two vlogs. So if you're in that, especially if you're in that Queensland part of the world, because yep. it's at Gold Coast, yep. uh, those guys are massive. Yep. All those podcasts up there do so well and they've got such an engaged audience. So for us to be a part of it's pretty cool. Have you two in the corner, yeah? Yeah, yeah we're excited. Fucking oath, yeah. Don't fucking lose on behalf of Levels. You can't lose, bro. You're not going home with us. You stay in Gold Coast. <laughs> I don't lose. I don't lose. So. Right, rip into the show. All right, All right see thanks, you, brother. Lukey. All right, so uh, it's just straight off the bat, um, Obviously, get behind our boy. Our, uh, get behind our boy, Lukey. Um, it's a big quietly thing, confident. I'm quietly confident. We made. I know he's uh, he's ready to go for this. And I've seen what in a short space what he's able to do for the half marathon. Yeah. And and where he went from his running. So six months. Um, he's got training. That dog. He's got that dog in him. Got that he's got dog it in him. Mason's um, done some. Yeah, it's good, mate. So they're good. Can... They're just good for you, really. Yeah. Like there was never really a fight. I went into where there was like that much animosity and hate. Yeah. You know, it's a difference there. I watched that um, the fight on the reef yep. a couple of weeks ago. I was like, fuck, Nas like just came in. There were some bad intentions. Yeah. Like Junior Paulo and that. They're in there to fucking fight. Yeah, they didn't knock the, each other yeah, out. Yeah, bro. Like I was there going, because they're current players, man. They've still got it in them. Like I was like, I think the fights I had, I was like, well, I think I was playing with Newcastle and was, I think I thought Troy Flavel. We had mad mutual respect. We weren't going to try and knock each other out. Yeah. Now it's different, man. They come in there, man. They're Fucking balls on the line. It takes takes a bit to get in there. Like yeah. fucking Jared Walsh. I mean, he's 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 a dog, man. Yeah, he went he at is. him, bro. Like, everyone just sees that uppercut that uh, Big Nas got on him. Yeah, but I thought he, he lost his he, teeth, but it yeah. was just saliva, wasn't it? That's and then like really Benny Hanna, Benny Hanna, he's fighting me. <laughs> One of the best blokes in the world. He goes, "I got to fight. I got fucking ten kids." <laughs> <laughs> so he's going in there with Junior Paulo, <laughs> mate. Big shout out to yeah. Junior. He's an absolute gun. Dog. But Benny Hanna's got some balls, bro. Yeah. 
He goes, you do anything for 10 kids. He goes, you got to <laughs> fucking feed them. It's yeah, expensive. It's expensive. Right. So, yeah, anyone who gets into the ring gets my utmost respect, man. Nothing but love for you, Lukey. So, good luck. And I'll be there helping you. So, so will I, mate. And hopefully all of our subscribers, or 19.6K yes. of them. So we've got an extra 200. Away. We've got an extra 200 yeah. jump. This is our second last episode for the year, by the way. So get us to 20K. If you've got some mates that have been watching or you've been watching, you haven't subscribed, we've got mm. a few comments. People are like, oh, I didn't even realize I've been watching you guys all year. Our yeah. ones from day I only one. just subscribed last week. I only just subscribed. You did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we can, you can be forgiven. Yeah. It's all right. Um, also with our Levels Run Club, um, it's been great. Five yeah. weeks in a row, um, really uh, stoked with the community. Um, got some really cool stories of people that have got involved. Uh, in particular, there's one guy that really stood out last week. I won't share his story because that's you know private, what he's been going through, and just for him to come down. We are having a break this week because we, are, we have commitments with the tab for Derby Day. So we're going to be down in Melbourne Saturday morning, which we normally do it. Um, so, but what I want you to do, if you have been coming down, still get 5k in around where you normally run. Um, I'll probably, t I'm going to take my runners down and do something down in Melbourne. I don't want to, um, create an event that I don't know the area all that well. Um, so I'll probably go for a run on, on Saturday morning. Make sure I'll post it in the, in the Strava club to let you, let you guys know that I got after it as well. Hey, I Luke, did my 5k. Cut, cut this out. If our flights are one o'clock, right? Um, on Saturday. Oh, Friday. Friday. Fuck, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, oh, we, we, we leave just for yeah, clarification. Yeah, I think we can get it before. We yeah. leave Friday afternoon. Um, so I'll be training Saturday morning down there. I'll run 5K. I'll post in the Striver group. So if you have been coming to the runs, a couple of big yeah. boys, they're making some really love good it, progress. Man. A couple um, of them, they weren't even doing like 5K. Yeah. What, two and a half, two and a bit. Now the, the third or fourth week, ripping in the 5K. It's great. Yep. So uh, make sure you keep it up. Keep it up. Yeah. Um, as always, follow us Apple, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X, is it? Facebook. Yeah. We're on everything. So uh, make uh, we love the support. Two episodes to go. So let's get into it. Right. Um, our first, well, not 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 so much question, but some information on on Dom Young because we were asking about Dom Young's situation last week. He had a sinus infection. This is from UK Adam One Hundred, affecting his brain. Lucky to be lucky, oh, lucky to be in camp, I guess, because they were able to. Um, you know, look after yeah. him uh, in hospital for a week, but fully recovered, uh, fully expected to recover soon. Um, England versus Tonga has been very competitive. England have been saved by good performances, especially uh, debut halfback Mikey Lewis. So he's a Hull KR player. Yeah, he goes played, right. Played, played, played roughly, really good in the first test. Yeah, Not played roughly 60 games. Um, he looks like a, I didn't know he was player. that young. He's a rookie, right? He's pretty much years two, old. He's been in the two, game for two years. That's he's, his, that's he's, his he's, second um, uh, English cap. So he's played the two caps. Yeah. He's played a Hull KR who have been emerging over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. Before that, he was at York City in the grade blow. Yes. So uh, Mikey Lewis looks, uh, looks a real player of the future. Um, we're going to get later on in the show, I'm going to break down all the plays that are off mm. available and I'll read out the names to you for November 1. It is yeah. November 2nd mm. right now, right Thursday, now. November 2nd. We're going to go through all the lists and I'm going to chuck in uh, an English Super League player. I think there's a, a changing of the guard over mm. there. There's these young emerging players and I've got one in particular who I think – uh, will be a hot commodity. Yeah, good. Uh, so for so we'll get to that a little bit later on. Thanks for the update, Adam. Um, this one is from Brethren. At oh, Brethren. Brethren, hey boys, do you think that the Luai signing with management is indicative that he wants to go to another club? Who did why, he sign with? why would he sign with a management and forfeit a portion of the salary that Penrith had tabled? It was quite clear they weren't going to go much higher, and they didn't. They only went extra fifty k from their original offer. Um, they signed with Give Black some, Entertainment. Yeah. Black um, Money? Black Money. Yep. Okay. Um, so Shout on the flip Walk, side. Walk and the boys. Yep. On the flip side, maybe it's indicative that he is going to re-sign with Penrith. Penrith might have added the 50K to cover his management slice and Luai's management will help with third parties, etc. Just trying to get my head around the mm. whole situation. Give me some context. He had a deal in front of him yeah. and he signed with a new management, which then released that contract and the new management now will take care of the new contract, well, which he is available to negotiate with rival clubs okay. as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, would love to hear your thoughts. So, Okay, well, he is a thing. I'm not sure who his ex-manager was. He obviously wasn't happy with him. Yeah, I think that's you know? like he's yeah. And he knows this, this contract is going to be the biggest of his life. And, yes. it's, and it's pretty much, you know what? You're not doing that much for me. 
I'm fucking big on social media. All I need is someone to renegotiate my contract. A four-year deal, hopefully, you know, generational changing money. And that's what he's doing. Yep. Like he's like these other guys helped him out. They might, mightn't have done much for his career. I'm not sure. But I mean, usually when it comes to this contract now and you're not – this relationship's not good mm. for the last 10 years and you just can't wait because you can't wait to get out of your contract or wait for it to end. Mm. Obviously, it's not it, – it hasn't been a, a happy a happy little road there, right? I, I agree with you 100%. So you agree with me. Like my, my take was going to be on don't worry about him staying at Penrith or leaving. It has nothing to do with it. It's more to do with he's about to sign a big contract yeah. and no matter what, he just didn't want that old management company a Getting part all of that, that money. Money. Right? Yeah. Like that's that's all it is. It's money now. This is He's going to sign a four-year deal. It's probably going to be close to a mill a year, something like that. And it's like this is life-changing money. Yeah. And he deserves most of it. And I'm not sure what sort of deal he struck up with black money. It might be just like less on the percent. It might be just the – I don't know. Like something's – Sweeten the deal on the black money end mm. where he's like, right, that seems like I fit better there than there. There's a plan for black money for him. Yep. There's no plan with the other side. I think, I think, yeah. That's think what, that's, right. that's the only way you can look at it. And yep. I know, and people, players have been in this, in this um, position a lot of times. And I know what position they're in. That's yep. why I can sort of speak on it. I'm like, okay, well, he hasn't been happy with this bloke for years. He's only come into his life when he's off contract. Yeah, could do. Yeah. That happens a lot. To well, we had him since sure. he was like 18 years old. You know, he's, a, you know, yeah, that's that's what's happening. You know what? You know what's uh, I think the strongest thing in management these days. When you look at maybe you know, man, I don't know which management is, I didn't look into it, but um, if you've got a, a shitload of you know other talent, young kids that are coming through, um, and word of mouth, like yeah. he, he looks like he spends a lot of time, or he's got really good relationship with Latrell and um, and Cody from yeah. his time um, playing for New South Wales, and I think that's obviously played a factor. I think. In this day and age now, if you're a emerging mm -hmm. management company, because they're still emerging, like they've been, been around for a bit, yeah, ten about years. last ten, ten years. years yeah. But now they're starting like they've got top tier Making players. Making moves, man. And, and and when you've got top tier players at the top of their game and they're putting in a good word for you, it can only help. You just want to be respected and loved yep. by your management. Not be not see them every two or three years when you're off contract. You yeah. want them to be making moves for you off the field, giving finance financial advice, setting you up off the field because you're only in this game for a minimum time, boys. You know, and you've got to set your life up after footy because it ain't gonna last forever. And Black Money must have a plan like that for all these, for all their players. Seems because if it doesn't, because if it because if they don't, a lot of players will start leaving. Yeah, you know, they seem to be gaining. Other people start. To, Seem to be losing. Yep. So something's happening out there. Must be doing something right. Must, yeah. So they're doing something right. Yep. Other management when they when they try and get so many players, it just dilutes everything, and okay. they don't have enough time for the other guys. Unless you're the big dog, right? Yep. You know, like, and they're not caring about the guy who's just signed a three year deal at you know four hundred thousand. Like, it's yep. not much now. You got to be that million dollar player now to get all the attention from these managers. Then you got the old school managers like Sammy Ayub and Daryl Mather and all these guys. They're from like the 90s. Yeah. You know, they're all set. They've got other people working for them. They've yep. got this new wave of management. Armin Mary, you know, like Mehi and uh, Tyron Smith, all these other guys. Braith and Asta. Yeah. Great guys because they've got time. Yeah. And it's, it's more quality. Yeah. It's almost. And quality time. Yeah. It's quality. So it almost be like. The care factor. If, if, I, if I'm a younger player, especially if I'm a younger player, almost like hitting my prime and. You're going to be in the top bracket. I'm almost looking at those other guys, those right, young guys that are coming through, because they can. You know that I'd rather, for sure, rather have a, a manager that's probably got five or six clients. Mm. Uh, you know that he can he can manage your dealings as as well as. And you want it, you want it directly too. You, you probably don't want the old school system of you know having scouts and different management. Like if you sign at a company, you want their big dog. Yeah, man. It's 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 changing the guard with management. Yeah. So these younger guys are coming up. Yeah, you know, they're at about that my age, a bit older. Uh, they understand the game. Yep. They understand. They're not sitting on the on their laurels of or what they've done in the nineties and two thousands and stuff like that. All those older blokes sort of go on to the side. Mm. They're getting in their sixties, man. Yeah, time for a new age. Um, and sorry, yeah. nothing. They just need to be cared about. Yes, these new managers actually care. You're a commodity. You can make me money. I make you money. All that kind of stuff. You're yep. a team. That's what black money is. It's like a brotherhood there. Yeah, for sure. They're building it for sure. Um, 
This one's from Jimmy Reed. Hey, lads, do you see Souths lining up next year? How do you see Souths lining up next year? I can see it being very similar, but there's also a big chance for change. Hawkins uh, was really good in the New South Wales Cup and then won the state championship. Um, will that put pressure on Ilias? I think Ilias is the player that's under the most pressure for sure. Uh, Trell was always under scrutiny, and now with White arriving and being so versatile, do you guys see him slotting in the centres and pushing Tass to the wing? Or they've got that young kid, Munro. Um, Mace, who looks a real player of the future, I think he'll get more footy this year. Would love to hear your thoughts. Cam Murray also scored six tries in six straight games for Australia. And that's predominantly been on the edge. Mm. So um, a lot of there's a lot of moving parts at South next year. Yeah. Like it seems, it seemed pretty obvious at first when they signed him. Um, well, for me anyway, Campbell Graham on the right, Jack White and comes and plays centres. I like Latrell at fullback. I like Cody Walker at six, and I think Lockie Ellis has still got a big future. But what it, what Jack White does, he gives him so much versatility. He can play centres. Fullback. Apparently, he hates playing fullback. So you almost got to rule fullback out. Six, or you could. I, I think you know the older Jack White gets, he could. I think they've got a real problem on the left edge. You know, they've been playing Jai Arrow on the on the left edge back mm-hmm. row. They've just re-signed Jai. I think Jai's, Jai's a, a lock, bro. I love Jai in the middle. Jai Jai is a lock. Yep. He's not. He's a locker. He's a middle. He's a front row. He's a thirteen. He puts Cam Murray on that left edge. Mm. Easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can fix it. Yep. But they will not fix anything unless they get front rows. They'll finish where they did this year. They'll struggle a little bit. Yeah. The lack in size. I think. Yeah. They, they and they really thought they Harme Sele and all these blokes yes. were gonna they were gonna ascend. Totola ascend. It's sort of like plateaued a little bit. You Totola, know, I'll, get, I'll forgive Totola's year this year because of injury. Yeah. I think he'll have another brief, another big season and he'll come on. You've got Tom Burgess, you know, he's getting, getting a bit older, one. mate. When Tommy misses games, you can really feel it. I yeah, think they but he, really needs, get... he needs a fucking, you know, a little dog with him. Yeah. Like, like you need a little bit of depth and a bit of size there. They, they signed they're... Sean Kepi from Manly. Yeah. You think, he's you think good, he, good defender. Yeah, yeah, off the bench. Good defender. He'll be, he's, a, he's, a good, he's a good role player. Do you, do you think I that's like enough him. size No, for it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough. And you know what the thing is? You can't get a good front rower. No. You can't. It's not like – I'm not saying this shit like they haven't developed anyone or anything like that. You can't go out and buy a Tino or Payne Haas or Adam Fanul Blake because they're locked up. That's how important it is to NRL teams to get front rowers. Do you like Payne that Davey Mawale? Yeah, I do, man. Yeah, Yeah. it's all right, but I'm waiting for him to take that next next step. You know, the next step. None of them are taking that next step. Tom Burgess is still starting. Mm. Bro, he needs help. Yeah. You know, like, uh, yeah, you're not going to do much with a great back row and the best back line if you don't have – the big book ends up the front destroying teams. On like, if you start like, if you just say, we start putting that. So if you go, you, you could potentially look at a team, Latrell, fullback, obviously AJ on one wing. Then you've got either Tyron Munro or uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Tass on the wing. Um, you've got Jack White and Campbell Graham, Cody Walker, Lockie Elias, Cam Murray either on the edge or in the middle. We swap edge. with Jai Arrow, yeah. so whoever plays It just depends edge. if Jai, so if Jai Arrow goes to the front row, then Cam will be lock. Yeah, okay. so like so that's the only reason lock? why is because yeah. they have no depth at front row. And yeah. Jai Arrow is a fucking dog. He just doesn't stop. But he's a lock because he's the third sort of prong, right? Yeah. You've got two big boys up the front, and then he can get the ball in the third play. Do you think if you moved um, Cam Murray to an edge, put Jai at lock, they'd lose – a whole heap because Cam Murray plays that really yeah. nice shape through the it's middle. It's hard, man. Mm. It's hard because I don't. I I love Cam Murray the way he plays. And he, on his on his best day, he's probably one of the best locks in the game. I agree because he's got footwork both sides of the ruck, and I want him attacking both sides of the ruck. Yeah, you need if him involved plan, there, because if he's on that left edge, you can game plan for that because he ain't going to go on the other side because you're not allowed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Unless you kick it down his edge, and he's going to get that play two or three and just straight into four guys. Yeah. So like. What do you do there? It's a, it's it's hard. Yeah, yeah. With Cam Murray, it's just, it's, it's going to be hard. I'd like if he if he was locked because he can tack both sides of the ruck, and yep. that's where he's the most dangerous. When he's playing for Australia, when he's playing for New South Wales, he can sit on an edge because everyone it's the best so of the best. Stacked. Everyone's stacked. You, you know, but when Carrigan, you put, yeah, in the you know, you everyone does their job, and it, the gaps you get your one on ones in the Australian team. That's where he gets his one on ones because everyone's running the right line. People out the back, a lot of diversion here and there, and he runs the perfect line. Mm. Like he's a great player. You know what I'm thinking? The more I'm thinking about it, though, because whenever I watch a South game, he just tackles himself Sorry. to a standstill and as well. And I'm not sure how long Cam Murray is going to last in the middle well, that's for another I'm, three or four years, bro. That's what I'm worried that's about. That's all he's done is tackle and, like, 80 minutes, like, fucking – he's averaging just, say, 65, 70 minutes a game. Yeah. A, you know, every, every game. He's very durable as well. Yeah. And what about this? I think you'll like this one, Mace. What about he starts on the left edge to start the game? Yeah. That way it keeps him out of all the shit to begin the mm. game. 
And then when Jai Arrow has his first spell at the 30-minute mark, because Jai can play big minutes, flip Cam to the middle, bring an edge back row onto the edge, and then he can play without – so he's not taking that – yeah, I 20, think there's, 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 ways to start there's ways around it. There's ways around I was speaking to Gus the other day about just say where players like I used to defend in the middle and then attack wherever I wanted to, and like there was just ways that just say if you if you needed to go okay, just defend at the le- at left four yep. for the first half, Willie, really, and then start Sunny at lock. You know what I mean, or in the back row. You know what I mean, and then and then you could spell each and other, and then yeah, like and then go back in the middle, like it's interchangeable, like yep. knowing like Cam Murray can play on an edge, defend left edge, right edge, and in the middle. Yeah, you can say Cam, just st- play the first fifty or fifty or sixty or whatever left edge, attack, yep. just defend at the left edge. Yep, but attack wherever you want. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, yep. there's ways around it. There's yep. co- you don't have. To, it's not like, oh my god, he can't do that. Yep. You can defend it right for the elite and, players can and, play atta- anyway. and attack wherever you want. Yep. He can do that, Cam Murray. You just don't, you don't have to plug him in the middle because he plays lock. He can have 13 on his back and defend at left four or right four and then attack wherever he wants. Like, I don't think that's a big deal. You're yeah, not going, either. holy shit. Yeah. Like, players can play. That's yeah. what you play. Don't be dumb. And he's Cam Murray is one of the most smart. He's one of the smartest players in the comp. He's probably one of the most versatile. Yes, and in the versatile. Comp. So you can. Yep. Get away from that initial fucking barrage in the middle easily. Yep. Just get other people, plug and place, and do your job. Well, I don't know if we solved that for you, Jimmy, but uh, we've thrown more yeah, options at you anyway. Um, we it, solved it. It is uh, November 2nd. Listen to us, JD. Yeah. <laughs> JD, you know. Hey, love, love you, JD. You, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's November 2nd. So, Mace, I'm going to go through all the players that are currently available to – uh, sign for the following season in 2025. Yeah, right. So that's uh, the rule. So just say right now. Right now. So some people who don't understand it at yep. home. Right now, if you're contracted, even like just say Luai or anyone who's got two or three year deal, you can potentially get out of your deal. Is that right? No. So you're or off, if you've got you're one, year, contract one year to go. After 2024. One year to go. You just got one. You ain't got two years. It's just one the year. one year. Yep. So the players at the Panthers are starting from the bottom, working their way down. Uh, Jerome Luai, Sanua, Taruva, Taruva's Luke Garner, Matt Eisenhuth, Mitch Kenny, Paul Alamotti, Taylor May, Tyron Peachy, Zach Hoskins, Dane Laurie. So Jesus some big names in there. I've highlighted obviously Jerome Luai, Taruva, and Mitch Kenny I think is a big one. For oh, yeah. yeah. Who, who, you know, obviously you priority – because I'm not going to ask the priority for all the teams. Jerome stands out uh, I think for – because he'll be in – I've got a top ten after this as well. But out of Taruva and Kenny – um, do you think they're able to keep both those players? Easy. None of them have got rep jerseys any, you know. So yeah. you can just go, you can cap them. You go, Kenny, all right, he's three fifty or something like that. Taruva. Taruva's been playing for Fiji, yeah, but different. Yeah, I know, yeah. but like as in and he's a winger. Yeah. You know, like he's he's a winger. So they'll probably get two fifty, three hundred. Here's my here's where here's where I think it gets tricky with Taruva. I think a lot of teams will look They will go, they will, but do you want to win, mate? Mm. That's the culture that they've got there and the negotiating when you're sitting at the table opposite. Yep. Do you want to win or do you want to go home and just and go over somewhere and get bottom four every year? Yeah. You've had a taste of what this is what success is like. Totally different on the other end. Go there for more, what, for 100, 200,000? Yep. Your whole legacy's dead. They'll give this to you. This is the spiel they'll have you. This is the culture. This is the club. You can win here. We win, blah, blah, blah. You can go somewhere else, get 100, 200 grand more because they ain't going to offer him double of what whatever Panthers are going to offer him. Yeah. And no one's going to do that to Mitch Kenny either. Well, here's, here's my thing. I think, you know, salary cap is is definitely yeah. going to put some restraint on them. I don't think they'll be able to if, – if they just say if Jerome's done because he would be their priority, mm-hmm. if it comes down to Taruva or Mitch Kenny. Taruva because they will just go next yeah. on the wingers. Yeah. And the outside backs. Okay, so priority would be Kenny. Yeah, man. Would be because he's a he's yeah. a gun nine. Yeah, and can he's play a lock. top five nine. Can play lock. Hits like a truck. Probably. I I also think he's got origin. I, yes, I think yeah, he can like play he origin in the future. Yeah. He could be an origin player. All right, the Broncos have off contract Adam Reynolds, Billy Walters, Brendan Pekura, Corey Oates. Uh, he's got a player option in twenty four and twenty five. Dalloway's Hoyter. Ezra Mam is a big one. Jock Madden. Jordan Ricky is another big one. Kurt Capewell is a big one, but he's getting a little bit older. And Marty Tupperwell. I've highlighted Adam Reynolds, uh, Ezra Mam, and Jordan Ricky. For me, and this might be controversial, I think their priority is Ezra Mam. Ezra Mam, for sure. Purely because of the age of Adam Reynolds. Purely because he's a gun and he's a better player as well. Mm. Like he's freaky. He's 20 years old. 20 Come on, years man. Old, Look what yeah. he just did. He's a future rep player. He's the future of the Broncos. Probably going to get one or two years max out of Reynolds. Reynolds, like he's like he's he's there for it's a game manage and get him through games. 
You know, took a hit this year in the grand finals. He copped a bit of shit. He wants to right those wrongs. He'll have two years. How long? Yeah, do you reckon two years is the the, the ceiling for, yeah. for Reynolds and, and some of these players? Because we're going to get down a little bit later on. We've yeah. got Chad Townsend involved as well. Yeah. Um, some of these, like, well, he's like you've he, seen how valuable they are. Shawnee's going to be off contract, obviously, um, as well. Well, sim- similar to, like, just say what they did in the NFL where you can't really touch halfbacks anymore, mm. right? They can't pass the ball. Yeah, can't touch QBs anymore, yep. right? So the halfback, they can as soon as they pass the ball, you cannot hit them, you know. So that fear factor out when they go to line, like you know Reynolds, they, they dig into the line, but they, you know, they're not like JT or Joey digging right into the line, copping massive hits, and no yep. one gives a shit. So there's no, you know, you could probably get through a game unless people are just spotting you up all the time in defense. You can get through games without fucking really getting tackled that much, mm. right? Yep. Like especially Reynolds, he can get, he, he's one of the best at getting through games and evading contact. But you know, as you get older, mate, it's less about like the games, it's the training, it's the rest. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's Reynolds could play, but if you, Reynolds could play for another three or four years at this level, I think. Yeah, I think. Because he's got a great team around him of young little, young dogs who just want to get after it. But if you spot him up like Penrith did nonstop, then you'll get at him. Mm. But it's hard to get him. It's, it was hard. It's hard. He's tricky, man. He's a tricky little – he's tricky. fucking yeah. – he can get around the field unreal. Yeah. And going to the days where you can hide your right three, right? Yeah. Everyone needs to be able to make their tackles. Correct. I agree. So Jordan Ricky, he's he's the future. He's a good player. Yeah. Um, but Ezra, man, he's the dude. Like he, What is he? 30, he's 33, Reynolds, right? 33, yep. So 34 next year? Yeah, he'll be 34 in July. I've got I've got okay. the dates for all the players Depends in my top Depends how 10. long Reynolds wants to play as well. Yeah. Yep. You know, like he, he's already won a premiership. Yeah. You know, like, I know he wants to win with the Broncos. I think he would love to win. Of course he Broncos, would. Yeah. Of course he would. And he, and he knows the window was two years. Well, he, he, let me ask you a question. If he does indeed win next year, do you think he sails off into the coaching Maybe. ranks and just starts coaching at the Maybe. Broncos? Maybe. Because yeah. he's been around for a minute, right? Yeah. How, how many games he played? Close to 300. Yeah, he'd be close to 300. He started the Coming year before this, me. I think he's 2008 2010. or nine or something like that. I think like it's 2010, 11, the same year that I started. Um, as for the Storm, they've got Nick Meany, Aaron Penne, Joe Chan, Marion Seve, and I think Remus Smith is a player that's – yeah, I'm not too sure about Remus. He fell out of favour with Melbourne Injuries, last year. Injuries, Injuries. He's been injured there yeah. a lot. But I think when he's at his, when he's at his peak – um, he's a really good right centre for him. Oh, he's a gun. Mm. He just needs to be fit. Hard, it's hard when you come back from a major injury, come back and just try and be that dude before. Nothing was really working. Mm. You end up getting dropped. So Marion it's a little bit of fucking resilience now. On the yeah, order. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of, you know, go through some resilience, get back in the lab, work harder on your game, get better. And I think you'll bounce back this year and get that New Zealand jersey back. The Warriors. Everyone have, else, sorry, everyone else. I don't. I don't think it's a massive the priority. Same. That's why I didn't mention anyone else. Uh, the Warriors. They don't really have anyone of like they've got Sean Johnson, but Sean he's getting old, and Shorty alluded to on the coverage that next year could be his last year. Mm. Uh, he basically said, I'll paraphrase him, but he was talking about he's glad he would come back and didn't retire when everyone was telling him to retire last year, um, and he. In, in, I think, you know, if you sort of read between the lines, he's talking this could be his last year. Yeah. I could be wrong. Uh, Dallin just re-signed. Uh, he was on this list. He re-signed last yeah, night. Awesome. Uh, Luke Metcalf is, a, is, is is another one. Tohu Harris is getting older. Jazz Tavanga, I think, might be the, the player that they'll be looking to keep and, and build around. Freddie Lusick, Jackson Ford, and Vailangi Kepu. So yeah. um, I mean, look at, they'll be a lot of older at, guys, at, a lot of keeping journeymen. those guys, yeah. right? A lot of those guys, especially if they're a little bit older, they're not leaving, bro. Yeah. And New Zealand will play on that. I think Tohu and Sean, if uh, Webster wanted to keep them, would might sign one year deals. Just seeing yeah, how things like just are going. See how you each go. Year. Like yep. the culture that they're building there, it's very important to have those two there yep. for the next couple of years. I think Sean Johnson's got another two years in him, just off his effort this year, yep. and his confidence levels, like, and the confidence in the system and the coach, the other players around him. He doesn't have to be the man. You know, like he, even though he was the man this year, he doesn't have to be all the time. Just yep. play your game. Just play your game. Do exactly what you did this year. I agree. Because everyone else is going to do their job. No. So, Lukey, oh, we can't hear you as well because that's – I heard you say – Shawnee's Instagram Shawnee's, post. No. Yeah. You, I heard you say Shawnee's Instagram post. No. What, what was it about? Yeah, he was alluding it was like last dance. Oh, is he doing last dance? So, yeah, that's <sighs> pretty much – so, Lukey was saying that How old's Lukey? I mean, how old's uh, that? How old are you, 31, <laughs> Lukey? How old's SJ? SJ would be 33, 34 as well. They all started the same year. Chez, Reynolds, they're all like 10 and 11. Like, Chez is the oldest. He's 34, well, 35 next year. Yeah. Sean Johnson ain't – I think he's 32, turn 33. Yeah. 
All right, uh, let's get to the Knights. Off contract, Bradman Best, I've highlighted. Dane Gagai is getting a little bit older now. Gags and Nari Tuala. Uh, Jacob Saifidi, I've highlighted. Christian Mapalangi, Matt Croker and Tyson Gamble. Leaf Tyson Gamble, lame mate. <laughs> Jacob Safidi and Bradman Best. Um, uh, Jacob Safidi, both these players were yeah. really good in Origin 3. Um, and Bradman Best has been offered big money. Mm. Um, Who buy, I wonder? I don't, George? Is it? Uh, Tigers apparently are big on Bradman Best, and I would dare say that a, a team like St George would be keen on Bradman Best. Would he well. want to go? But see, you've got to get the number built, right. What they built this year, and he sees a future in that club. He's played at Newcastle in the semi-finals. He's a Newcastle boy. Mm. You sort of want to like. I think he's Central Coast, but close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's close enough. Yeah. Um. You know. You know what it's about. He's a junior there, so yep. he knows. Like he loves playing for Newcastle. Still young man. Mm. You want to give that sort of. You want to give that roster red hot crack. See we, where we go. See where we can go. You think their roster because they've done. I think they've got a good job of uh, managing their roster salary cap wise. Mm. Right. You got. You know, Gamble doesn't. He wouldn't be on much. Jackson Hastings. You think probably wouldn't be on like top tier seven money. No, no. They just re-signed that Phoenix Crossland, who's developed into a good nine this year. Um, KP is obviously big, um, but then they've also gone and done a great job. And I've said this all along. The teams down the bottom going and recruiting English players in mm. Kai Pierce Paul, I think it's going to be a real player for him. A Wigan, Wigan Warriors back row. And also Leon Price's yeah. um, young fellow, Will Price, who's a, a bit of a um, jack of all trades. Yeah. Well, same as Leon Price. He can play fullback, wing, yep. centre, carve you up everywhere. Yep. Played against him in his prime. It's dangerous. So I can't see them having a shitload of money anywhere outside of probably Tyson Frizzell, maybe. And. Uh, Gags would have been on really good money before this season for sure to get so him for Gags the got next year. Yeah, um, so Gags be thirty four when he thirty three. Yeah, Gags this should year. get older as well. Been, Gags That's, been around for a minute. He yeah. was here when I was there yeah. ten years ago, <laughs> two thousand twelve. Young kid just come down from the Broncos. Yeah, he's had, been a, great career, a, had a great career. Yeah. a great career. If it comes down to Jacob Saifidi or Bradman Best, because I've, there's been um, mm. murmurs that they've been looking at moving Daniel Saifidi now for a while. I think it's got to be Jacob Saifidi. You would keep they, or you lose. That he'd be my preference to keep. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, him, hard, him, as I said, it's hard to come across world class front rowers, and yep. he's a world class front rower. I agree. He's an Origin player. He's a borderline Test player. Like if he strings a good year together, he's always in Origin. Like mm. they look at him like that. Yeah, you know, he just had about six games before Origin, six, seven, seven games. Bang, straight in. Yeah, like that's how highly they think of him, the selectors. So they see a lot of talent there. Well, new, new, new staff as well. But yeah, he's been super consistent. And Bradman uh, Best, like a couple of years another, ago, Daniel yeah. was the guy Daniel, down there, yeah. and then Jacob was sub- injuries, right? Yeah, both of them have copped a fair bit of injuries in the like, injuries in the last couple of years. Has derailed them a little bit to their rep honors. Yeah, uh, the Roosters off contract, big one, massive one. Joey Manu, Angus Crichton. Angus. Um, the cheese, hectic cheese, has a player option for twenty twenty five. So it's up to him whether player. he takes it up. And I think that's, <laughs> I think that's interesting because just <laughs> the season probably hasn't panned out how he anticipated it when he first arrived. So I've got him a little bit later on. Terrell May, I think he's going to get a lot of interest. Uh, Daniel Tupo, Jared Roy Hargraves is getting old. Kez is also getting old. Luke Keary, Nafu White, uh, he's you know on the extended squad for the Kiwis at the moment. Nat Butcher. I, I Satili Tupano, so some really big, mm. um, some really big names and uh, situations coming up for the Roosters. The priority is obviously Joey Manu, um, but I think the cheese one could be a little bit tricky down the down yeah. the road as well. And the player option, I always like it when players have got yeah, that. Yeah, it's good contracts. Joey Manu, what do you get offered? Like five mil from St George? They uh, that? one point two for four, so four point eight oh, over four. Fuck yeah. We'll get to Joey Manu in a bit. Yeah. Let's save that. I've yeah, got, I know. That, I've, that's, I've got him on I, my I don't know why. Down. I was getting some some baguettes from La Belle Baguette yesterday and they've always got the telegraph there or some sort of thing. So I look at the front and back page and it's like, yeah, yeah Joey Manu. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, cheese, you have to keep – you've got to have a genuine nine. He's yep. that dude. He, he had a few little injuries this year, combinations. It takes a little bit to, to get going. He really started knowing your role, knowing end, your role, he? and when to pass. And Sam Walker being in and out of the team. That development with him this preseason is important with Kiri. Everybody like that. Angus Crichton was missing for a little bit. Like I said, it's very important to get to nail this preseason. Yep. So I think Cheese will fit into that role quite easily, yep. and he'll probably end up picking his player option up. All that kind of stuff, you know. Last year, I'm not going off last year because mm. that was really it was all over the shop for the Roosters. Did you like his last five? Games? I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. If it come out this, it just takes a minute, right? Yeah, it when does. you're in a system, when you're in a Melbourne system, and it's sort of built around you and the way that you play and Harry Grant and all this sort of stuff, and then yeah. it's like, 
totally different. Yeah. Like Craig Bellamy's so system, totally little, different than Trent Robinson's. Tell me a little bit about that then, right? Because you played at a few different clubs. Yeah. You were the guy at the Bulldogs yeah. and, and you were the leader of the pack. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you feel that pressure – to immediately be the guy yeah, you at other to. teams when you, you have to. Yeah. Like every team that I walked did it, in, I was did it always play out that yeah, way it did, though? But did depends, it, but depends on the system, right? Yeah, okay. So just say the Bulldogs, I could I was defending in the middle but attacking both sides of the ruck. Yeah. I get to the Roosters and I'm put on an edge. Yeah. It takes like that fucking thing yeah. like Cam Murray, you see him on an edge, yeah. they start game plan for you, put that extra man on that right side. Yeah. Or if they put him on the right side, that means you gotta fucking keep chasing. That takes it's just boring for me if I play right side back row. So did it take a while to adjust? Yeah. To that? So I'm like, and then then Freddie started going, okay, well I'll push fucking do like you did at the dogs, defend in the middle, attack wherever the fuck you want. Then, yep. then I could play both sides. How of the long rug. did that take before you realized? About five that, weeks. Though. Yeah. Okay. Five or six weeks, yep. and then as everything started gelling, you know what I mean? Like so, it's it's different combinations. Lucky I played with Braith and Mini. And uh, You're familiar, with, and guys, and familiar yeah. with the yep. guys in rep football, but it took a while, you know. But like, don't yeah, I can't be just sat on an edge like the whole game. Yeah. Because play the teams will game plan, yeah. put an extra number there all the time. Even if you're at the middle of the field, if I'm on a right edge, they'll do the same. So I'm like, fuck, because yeah. you know, you know when the ball's coming, yeah. and they just move, they yeah. just move quicker. Okay. So you get hit three three times instead of like where I could just attack both sides of the ruck, usually, and then it worked out like that. But it takes a it takes a minute. New yeah. nine, you know, like new yeah. new team. They don't really know. They know how you play, but they don't know how when you when you want the ball, right? Yes, I had cool. Ogre and Roy and Pricey. You know, like I would be, I would be. Just saying, the system right now, I don't know where I'd fit. Do I play? Would I play front row or lock? Right? Mm. If I got Marco Mealy and Roy Asatasis as my props, mm. you got Sonny Bill, Andrew Ryan, and myself in the back row. It would depend on the makeup of the squad yeah. where you played. Yeah, exactly. Do yeah. I play like? Do I play? So if you played the Broncos, you're probably playing front row because you got Patty at lock. Yeah. And you, and you well, what do you, you do with Sonny? Did you put Sonny at second row and just leave oh, him no, on I'm an just edge? Talking about you specifically. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. So if you if you if you look at the you are versatile enough, like yeah. we're talking about with Cam Murray, dependent on the pack. So maybe if you go to the to the Rabbos, maybe you play that thirteen role. Yeah. But if you play at the Broncos, you maybe you play Flegler's role with yes. Paddy dropping you underneath. Yeah. And, and it'd be different around. to say just say in that pack that name the names I just mentioned. Ogre, Roy, Sonny Bill, myself, and Andrew Ryan. How do you like sometimes Sonny would just that's when I was telling you about interchanging and just playing wherever the fuck you fit. Yeah. And attacking where the weaknesses are. Not being sit, sat on an edge, like a right edge. Just say Sonny was playing right edge. If we saw the the right three, we'd be both spotting inside and out of his um inside shoulder, Double outside shape. shoulder. Double shape? Yeah. Yeah. Because we just played to their weaknesses, right? Yeah. If you're sitting there, you're going to get exposed. Where, wherever the spot is. Yes. You just play footy and just never get put on edges. And then, and then Melbourne and that started doing that sort of shit and really structured the game. Yeah. Where you can have back rolls, they could swap wherever the fuck they wanted to. Mm. Now you stay in your lane. Yeah. That was your fucking generation. Yeah, yeah. You never fucking moved from your right edge. Yeah. You would know well, what it was like over the other side. Well, I moved because I wasn't a, a set name, but like Gifty wouldn't move Gifty because yeah. Gifty was right edge. But see, they just the only reason I played right. You'd never cross right. the fucking black dot if yeah. you're a right side back row. Yeah. Or yeah. ball playing lock like him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he had his spots and, and yeah. he stuck to that, yeah, for sure. And most of these players, sorry, most of the players right now, they can all do what I'm saying. They don't – they just don't get coached they like that. They don't teach them. Yeah, Penrith do it. Yeah, they play. They yeah. play whatever the fuck they want. It's working for them. Uh, the Rabbitohs, off contract, Peter Mamazoulis, Isaiah Tass, Tom Burgess, Isaac Thompson, Michael Cheekham, Shaq Mitchell, Ben Lovett, Dean Hawkins, Josiah, Josiah Carapini, Carapini, Leon Tehel, Tane Milne. So – yeah. Nothing crazy there. Tommy's a big name, but Tommy's coming, you know, he's getting Tommy's back in. Tommy's bro. I think I'd like to see Tommy re-sign and, and just and be, like, a, be and a, a rabbit for life. He's yeah. the, do you know he's the most capped Rabbitohs player of all time? No, I didn't. That's no, sorry, up. sorry, sorry. No, that's wrong. Uh, It'd be close. Sutto, Sutto Sutton's is, 300. Yeah, Sutto's there. Um, and Merritt? No, he was the most capped because I was speaking to Sammy about it just before he left out of all the brothers. Cap per Burgess? Burgess. But like that's crazy to think, right? Because you remember when coming Tommy through, wasn't that dude. It Tommy, was Sam and Tommy then George. had the question marks. Yeah. Yeah. Sammy was the gun. Georgie has this great three or four yeah. year span. Tommy's outlasted them all. This is what Sam said. He has more games NRL, more games for the Rabbitohs, obviously, and he's got more tests than Sammy and George as well. That's crazy. <laughs> Good on you, Tommy. Shout out to Tommy. 
Um, just the, keep Tommy. Everyone else is probably just going to have to play for the play out of their skin this they've year. They got too, they've got too much money in in their big name players. Yeah, All these players will have hard. to move on. Um, as for the Eels, off contract, similar situation. Got a lot of money put into four or five core players. So Dijan Arcee, Bailey Simonson, Hayes Dunster, Jariah Mamosia, Kyrie Rodwell, and Makihisi Makatoa. Mm. Very I like similar. Makato- I like boys. Makatoa. So do I. Mm. So do I. He'd be good Ma- off the bench. Makatoa was a bit older. He can start. Yeah, he can start. Yeah, he, he's he's like he can start or come off the bench. I don't mind him. Bailey Simonson, he did uh, good in the centres. I reckon he's come. I reckon he's come in leaps and bounds. Yeah, strong. I reckon he's just gotten better. And I he'd think be, he'd be my priority, Simonson. Yeah, out of out of that group for yeah. sure. And I think Dejan Arcee would be nice if you could get him for a reasonable number to keep him as your backup yeah. half. Most of these guys are going to be playing out of their skin this year to get that contract to get that two or three year deal. Yeah, I think Parra going to be good this year. Uh, Which is good, and that's what you need. You need these players here, these role players. Some of these names that you mentioned in both in some of these teams that we're not really talking about, they need to have career best years. Yeah. Because this is their livelihood. Mm. Otherwise, you're on the scrap heap. That's how much of a cutthroat it is. For sure. If you're Over not the, if you're not these big names, we're not mentioning your name. We're just going past it. That means you just you've just got to knuckle down. Up your big preseason. Go fucking hard, and then get that get that contract right. Um, another team that's got some really big ones uh, is the Cowboys. Tom Dearden, yeah. obviously massively highlighted. Chad Townsend. Uh, he's getting into that point now. A little bit older, like some of the other players. Cohen Hess had a really good mm. season for the Cowboys. Best in a couple of years. Hylam Lukey has a player option Ooh, for 2025. Yeah. Jake Granville, Jake Clifford, Jermaine Tournoy Brown, Cole Felt, Sam McIntyre, Fuck. Sammy Vellame, Tom Chester. So the three I've highlighted that I think uh, in, in this order, Tom Dearden, I think Hylam Lukey's next in line, and I think Cohen Hess, uh, he's an origin player, and he's also um, you know, getting a little bit older. Chad Townsend, I think... I don't think he'd be a priority for the Cowboys. I think Chatty might be a good veteran pickup for one of these lower ranked teams. Uh, I think he'll finish. Year. I think they'll fi- he'll finish off there. I, th- I think not on that money, but I, so, no, no, I'm not saying that. no. He fucking will because that's what the the market demands. He ain't going to go from seven fifty eight to two hundred. I reckon Flano will get him to the Dragons in a, maybe. A year, year, uh, well, pff, fuck. Depending on what, what happens with Ben Hunt, Hunt, mate. I think Ben Hunt's going to stay there. So yeah, I'm just yeah. thinking. You're probably going to prioritise Tommy Dean, right? Mm. He's the future of the club. Face yep. of the club. Yep. Deserves it. Hylam Lukey, gun. Yeah. Just needs to be on the field. Um, and, then, and, then it's, and then it's Chad Town. The thing with Hylam Lukey, and this is why I reckon it's a bit tricky as well, though, they've got Luciano Leilua. Mm. They play pretty good money on the left edge, and they've got Jeremiah and I on the right edge. Maybe Hylam goes, I just want to play fucking he just plays, 80 man. minutes every no, week. And he's, not, and he's a young kid. He's a Cairns boy. Great kid. He just needs to fucking knuckle down. Have a great preseason. It's, it's not, Luciano Leilua ain't locked in on that left edge. He could easily come off the bench and play in the middle. Yep. He's got a lot. Of, his skill set is high. I just want to see the best out of Luci because mm. his skill set is very, very high. He needs to get fit and be consistent. I think um, same as B, when BJ put it all together, bro. He got three Dallium centers of the year, centers of the year. He's yep. a gun. I, I thought Luch was really good in the poor year that the Tigers had the year before. Mm. And I was hoping he was going to get rewarded with a, a big season. The Cowboys didn't play out that way through their form. But I think they'll go good next year and I think he'll have yep. a big year as well. Seagulls, no one really of note. Ben Travojevic, Christian tu- Tupolotu, Carl Lawton, Raymond Vega and Zach Fulton. I thought Zach Fulton already moved on. But um, – yeah, none of those boys are really going to hit the market that no. hard anyway. So, Sorry, I digress back to the Roosters. Tupanua was off contract with Crichton. Tupanua, Satuli Tupanua. And Nat Butcher. Come on, bro. You can't keep all them. No, no way. One's coming somewhere. I think two of them are going. Mm. Oh, well, I think room. I heard of that. What's her name's done? Angus. They've been to trying to get rid of it. Until to... they played in the World Cup, now he's going to stay here. Well, <laughs> it's, that rumour was squashed yeah, uh, yeah, about two or three days ago. But – there is a world in which he still does. Last this time last year, right. what he's starting back row for Australia. Yeah, he's just been injury ravaged this year. And again, he also and a bit come of a bad strong start. The, yeah, obviously he had a, a t- mm. tough off season, yeah. but he also come home really strong yeah, at the back end yeah. as well. Still a still a player that I'll be looking at. He's going to be slept on. The Dolphins, Anthony Milford, Edric Lee, Ewan Aiken, Mudders Wallace, Jesse Bromwich, <laughs> Cody Nicarima, Mark Nichols, Mason Teague, Ray Stone, Robert Jennings, Tessie New, and Valence to Mudders. Uh, <laughs> there's not really any player there that really no. stands out. So it's going to have to. They, they, as I said, they're the ones that you want to have their career best years because some of these names that we we all know these names, they just need to have a massive preseason. A lot of them are older. Yeah, Wallace is old. Nichols is older. Jesse Wallace is, is old. So, Wallace is valuable, man. Yeah, he would have been close. I reckon he would have been their top three players player. Yeah, he had some. He would have been up moments. there. He I think, been up there. I think maybe him and if Tessie New can get fit as fit. well. 
I think he'd be another player that they'd like to keep. So he's yeah, going to be Joe one of those Wallace. guys, Tessie knew, hopefully not. You know, in 10 years, he goes, God, I wish I had a nail to preseason or two. Mm. Really got the best out of myself. He's still young. Tessie That's what I'm saying. He's still young. I mean, he would. he's one of those guys who'd be like, he would carve in England. Yeah. He would. He would carve. He would. Here, the week in, week out stuff, that's the hardest thing to do. You've got to be about it all the time. <sighs> How old do you reckon Tessie New is? 23. 22. Jesus. Yeah. He's been around for five years. Yeah, five years, 2020. Yeah, I'm just saying, so like, good. he's at that age, you know, like, he still gets, he's still getting his contracts and that, but he has so much talent. Yeah. I, I agree. just don't want to see him get wasted. He's so strong, Karen. I don't know what, he, what position he is with the Ike, and he can really nail down, lose about seven kilos, and be a great center. Yeah. I think I think or maybe I reckon drop a couple of kilos, Muscle stay up. on the wing, and just play that. Um, Toto, yeah, Toto role. Go, you, I was going to go on uh, Marzu. Look, but. At, look at Toto and just go. I want to be that. Yeah, similar build, similar shape. Toto, hey, he slept on his fitness has slept on. Yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure he's not the best trainer, but he is match fit. Toto, no, no, I heard he's a really good trainer. Is he? Yeah, someone was telling me about. I'm it. not saying he's not a good trainer. Sammy, but I'm saying like with you know, Dylan Edwards numbers. No, well, right. Sammy told me. Oh, obviously, yeah, Dylan Edwards is a freak. Um, but Sammy told me the most impressive part because he'd spent some time. Uh, I'm talking about Sammy Burgess, by the mm -hmm. way. Freddie invited him for week one of, uh, sorry, Origin, Origin one, and watched him train. Mm -hmm. And he goes, L light, light, what's light the word? years, light years in front. The the way that Penrith train and their commitment to training. He goes, they go it, so then. hard. Brian Toto, Stephen Crichton, Jerome Luai, in particular. He goes that edge when they were competing. He goes, you can see why Penrith are the it's way they awesome are. fucking awesome. Because they know. train hard all yeah. the time. Never um, off. Never off. The Titans uh, have uh, Cleese Haas. I think he's a real player of future. Isaac Liu. Um, I think he went up in the Super League. Jacob Alec, Joe Stimson. Fozzie's getting old now as well. I think he'll be done potentially after 2024. Test series, Test series is going to age him to 50. <laughs> keep, Tom, keep him at nine, New Zealand. I like that Tom Weaver. Uh, he's a young mm. kid that played at the back end. and. Uh, you know what? Desi, right, man. Desi's got a really um, underrated record of young Haas that he develops. Like if you think back to Chez and Foz early on yeah. at Manly, um, then he also had Hocko Hawkinson. before that. And then he goes Keating? to – Sorry, yeah, Chris Keating. Then. And then he went to the Bulldogs, had Chris Keating and the Grub, who developed into yeah. really solid first graders as well. So – I'm um, interested to see if he can do the same with Tom Weaver. Isaac Liu is a key up there. I reckon if he has one good – you know, he's, he's got talent. Mm. He's a, a lot three, of talent, man. Two, two he's time, a gun. Two-time premiership winner, he maybe just, three? They just need to like uh, – I think the coaching of um, of Dez will get the best out of him. Well, he likes that middle play, yes. James Graham sort of role. Yeah. So I think he's, he's going to really thrive this year. Yep. I think I, that's the only guys that I think that I'll be really trying to keep right now. Yep. That's my priority. Um, Bulldogs got a lot of journeymen. Max King, Chris Patola, Ethan Kwai Ward, Hayes Perham, Jackson Topine, Jarrell Scout and Liam Knight, Reese Hoffman, Toby Sexton. For me, Mace, um, you're obviously close to this. You spent some time with mm. them, so I don't need you to comment on this one. But again, a bit similar. A lot of journeymen, what you talked about, big years for them. Uh, they're going to have to perform because they've got a whole heap of new players that are coming in. Yeah. And I dare say Gus will be looking to make some big moves in the next couple of years yeah, as well. Pressure's so. on. The blowtorch is applied. So there's just the, the challenge is out there, right? You just play play better. Yep. You, know, you have everything given to you off the field. Everything's right. You just need to play better. Train and hard. So it's, it's a great system there. So the boys just need to really buy into it. And I think it's the same for the Dragons and Tigers. So with the Dragons, Jaden Sewer, Tyrell Sloan, Jack DeBellin, Jack Bird, Ben Modak, some Marcella, big fucking names there. Matthew it's Fiongai, a lot of money. Max Fiongai, Cody Ramsey. I think there's a – this is even bigger because Flano will be coming down. Shit. He's going to want to spend some money. And – um a lot of these players could be moving on for sure. I'd, I'd prioritise Jack DeBellin. He's, he's a junior. Um, he's gone through a lot of shit over the last couple of years. I think um, I think he's a, I think he's a future captain for him, especially if Ben Hunt yeah. moves on. Um, so he'd be the player I'd be going for. Um, Mace, out of any of those names, Jaden Sewer, Sloan, Bird. Jack Bird, I like Sloan. Yeah. I like, there's some big names there. Yeah. Some, a lot of money, but there's yeah. a lot of cap space there. So they'll be looking um, – as I said, like all these guys, you know, there's no secret sometimes when you see a guy coming out with a ridiculous attitude, like best year ever, it's because he's off contract, mm. right? There's a contract year for most of these guys. And regardless, even if they've got one more year or two years, whatever it is, it's like it's – This is it. Year. This is it. So all eggs in. Hopefully, hopefully none of these guys get injured and they can just get on the field and just do the business, man, because they're all talented. Yep. All these people that are on these rosters – the, the scouts all look at all these guys, rather regardless of the big names, the guys that we haven't mentioned, they've all got talent. 
Every NRL player. Every single player has got talent. This is how hard it is to excel and dominate in the NRL because they've all been the best juniors, the best flag player, the best SG ball player, schoolboys, all this sort of shit. Then they get the NRL and they go, plateau. And even some of them. How the fuck do I get better? And even some of them played NRL and gone, fuck, he looks a real player of the future. 20 games later, this is harder than what I thought. You've got to maintain. It's hard. It's, hard. It's, 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 a, it's a fucking – you're never off. Yeah. Ever, always on, training, 24-7. That's why Penrith is so impressive in this day and age to dominate with four grand finals yeah, and win three. Yeah, it's a great system. It's fucking ridiculous. West Tigers, the biggest name is Stefano Utu Ikemano, which kicks us off, but he's got a mutual option, 2025. I think that's a contractual option. Be interesting to see what he does. Junior Tupo, Asu Kapoa, Sean Ball, Aiden Caesar, Justin Matamua – uh, he's, that's a club option. Brandon Tumuth, Jake Simkin, Rua Nakitura, no, Natikora, Natikora, uh, Sione Fainu, and Tristan Riley. So, apart from Stefano, a lot of guys are going to have to have big years at the Tigers. And again, another one of those clubs are just looking and seeing to see if any of these players want to say, all right, I want to be a good, Tiger. A good breeding ground, the Tigers. Mm-hmm. Be interesting. Yep. Toy Kamano is the man. Yep. Um, they got a good forward pack. They'll be they'll be impressive. I reckon they'll be. That, well, we obviously you go through this next year and all that kind of stuff, but they'll be all right next year. All right, here's my top ten with all those names. Mm. So number one for me, Joey Manu. Oh fuck you, yeah. Joey Manu, 27 years old. Uh, he's born in June as well. So if I am going to go after, so the report the the reports are four years, one point two for Joey Manu. For me, <sighs> fuck that. I'm going Joey Manu. If I'm a St. George Illawarra Dragons, which is the team that we reported, I'm going 1.5 over over five for a couple of reasons. Here's why. That's 7.5 million. That's generational money, which can help him look after his family. When you look at Joey Manu, whenever he's played, because and I'm paying for him not to play centers. He's coming to play fullback, by the way. That's fullback money, that's spy money. Uh, he's been relatively healthy um, throughout his career. He's as humble as they come, doesn't sink any piss, never in trouble, off field, glamour, good looking player. Like, you, yeah, all yeah, these yeah, things matter. That, mate, when you does, marketable. One, he's marketable. When you play 1.5, you got to tick so many boxes. He ticks them all. Also, whenever he's played a full game at fullback or six, he runs people, three billion meters. He runs 300 meters, and everyone goes, holy shit, he could be top three at his position. For me, Joey Manu is not only. Uh, the best center in the competition. He's top five fullback. He's a top five player in oh, the competition. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Easy. So I'm paying 1.5 for five because the reason, and it's probably a little bit over his market value because he's got to have centers. to. You're going to have to, St. George. No, if, well, if you're St. George. Or anyone. For also recruiting purposes, but to get him away from the Roosters because the. the That's what so, I was getting at. <laughs> so, so this is what people don't understand with the Roosters. They don't, you know, everyone speaks about their paper bags and all that shit it's not that it's what you can do life after the the roosters it's the networking it's all these things that come with the roosters so in order to get joey away from the benefits of what he might be able to invest in the information that he might be able to get the the people that he meets that can help him life after footy you've got to throw him crazy money and for me 1.5 over five years, that's 7.5 mil. And then, therefore, when we look at some of these other names, the journeymen, the guys like myself, Mace, when I'm looking at re-signing, and very often a player of my stature is not going to leave a club because you're not going to get crazy amount of money anyway mm. and you're normally comfortable with the club that you're at unless you look at a team and go, oh, shit, they just signed him. You know, like, fuck. Yeah. And if Joey Manu signs at the Dragons, some of these guys that are 50-50 about staying, and, and the Dragons might potentially be, be trying to recruit him for a, a reasonable number, they might go, shit, I'd fucking take go play less. with Joey Ma- yeah, Manu. and you, you take know? less. So I think um, – what, what do you think the Roosters are offering him? That's the, that's the most important. Are they even near that? Just say it's 1.2. I know yours is 1.5. Yep. It's 1.2 for St. George. Where do you think the Roosters are at? Well, see, the hard thing is with the Roosters, he's playing right centre. And you can't offer him – Teddy's 31 next year. Well, see, this is the tough conversation. And for me, and the reason I'd like to see him move um, is because I want to see Joey Money play fullback consistently. I think it's it's a disservice for him to be playing um, right centre. Mm. Even though he does still get involved in some capacity, they're not going to move Teddy. Teddy's the, Teddy's the favourite son. He's, he's won two competitions with him. He's, he's New South Wales. He's Australian captain. He's so, fucking James Tedesco. He's a gun. 
So there's a part of me that wants to see Joey Marnie to move and go, give him, like, this is his team. Does Joey Marnie want to play fullback? Has he even come out and said, I want that? Pop, I don't think so. But this, this is the part of it as well. Because so when you said he's humble, he yeah. ain't going to say shit like that. No, nah, he doesn't. I, know, I don't know what it's like when the, all this shit's down. It's yeah. like, Joey, what's, what's, what's Joey want to play? Yeah. If he's going around saying, I want to play fullback, yeah. he's leaving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's leaving. He's done enough for that club. He's won two premierships there. He's been a premier centre for the last, you know, six, seven, six years he's been at the club. Like, he's done, he's, he's done his job there. Yeah. And I think if he wanted to walk because he wants to play fullback, the Roosters won't even fight. I think they'll fight. I think. I just don't. Well, they can't. What are they? Then that yeah. it'll just make it'll make it really awkward with Teddy. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I it's, just. It's I a just big think. I think it's a very well, difficult conversation. But if he wants to play right centre, if he still wants to do his sweet. job right now, yep. he'll just stay at the Roosters. Rooster for Fucking life. call the fight off. Yeah. He's like he will never leave the Roosters because the Roosters are still a top eight team, potentially top four. And whoever they recruit, mate. Nick, don't fuck around. If he's content playing right centre, then this conversation's over. It's over. No one's going to get it. I don't know how he feels, but I'm just thinking, I don't think he really cares about mm. playing fullback. He's not coming out at all. There's never a rumour. The narrative's not it. there. I've he's never not going, I can play fullback. Yeah, he can play fullback. He can play 5'8", he can play lock, he can play anywhere. He's a gun. But do I want to play fullback? A lot of fucking running. Mm. You know how fit you have to be? You can yeah. easily do it. But he's getting little calf injuries and all that sort of shit that always creep up on you when you keep putting more miles into your legs. He's 27 years old. It's a fucking big change right now. He's been playing right centre for his whole career. But this would be the time to maximise yes, on a contract Yes, it has to be right well. now. Yeah. Yes. That's the only reason yeah. if he wants that 1.2, 1.3. Because the Roosters are going to like try and cap it and go, I think the best centres in the game are probably going to get like 8.59. So here's my point. I don't think he'll leave for 1.2. I think he's... No, I think you've got no. to blow him out of the water. No, I think know, it has to be 1.2. We know that. We, like, yeah. we know that. He's yeah. not going to leave for like, yeah, for 1.2 because yeah. I think the Roosters will be around that. I th I, no, I think we'll be around about a mil. I think they'll be 8.50. I reckon to, they'll to be a about, about, a, about a mil. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure like, – because he's, he's golden boot last like, year. Let's mm. not forget, but, yeah. forget about that. He's the best sure. top five player in the world. He deserves a million dollars a year. Mm. That's the starting point, that's I think. A, that's a minimum. That's the starting that's point for him. I reckon to even start the conversation with the Roosters, it's a mil. That's what the manager's saying. Yeah. Because he's that sort of talent. Otherwise he's I know there's others like, you know, there's other centres that are sort of like role players and defensive centres. Like he's everything. Yeah. He is everything. And if Teddy goes down, he's there. Yeah. So regardless, if Especially he's not getting that fullback Swale, money, you can too. sort of get that money. He can play wing, centre, fullback and yep. be dynamite and be top three in all positions. So um, – Yep, big one, big one. It's huge. Um, number two, Jerome Lawai, 26 years old, uh, three championships in a row, origin player. Um, I believe he can play seven, what he's done at the Samoan team last year. Uh, there was some comments I, I was listening to on the way in on SEN, Mace. I'll paraphrase it again. Basically, uh, they were at a sponsorship yesterday and um, Ivan was talking about Jerome's situation and said he'd obviously love to keep him. Um, you know, he thinks he thinks he will stay, but also um, for some of those other teams, it'd be a bit of a risk because uh, he's unproven at, at running a team as well. Who, so, said, who said that, Ivan? Ivan said that, but it was in a someone was recording it while they were at a sponsorship thing, so it was, wasn't supposed to get out. But out of context, it, it, it was out of context, and it wasn't it, it, it wasn't as bad as it sounded. But basically, saying he thinks Drone will play his best footy at the Panthers. He obviously wants him to keep keep him, but he understands that. There'll be a lot of money thrown at him. Mm. So I understand what um, Cleary is saying, but yeah. if he didn't perform in the World Cup like that, I'll be I would be thinking what Same. Cleary is. But like he showed everybody, he can run a team. Yeah, he got he got some more to, to he got some more to yeah probably kept taking out of context. I'm not going to do no. That. I, no, Ivan also put that into the context. He said we've seen it for some old, but not for an extended period of time. Exactly. Can mm. you do it for 27 rounds? Mm. Um, would would that be your number two? Like as in the yeah, your top ten? Easy. Uh, Joey and Jerome. Yep. Number three, it's a toss-up between Tommy Did and Ezra Mann. Sorry, so I can ask you a question. What yep. would you do if you were Jerome Luai? I would uh, I would sign elsewhere for big money because yep. I think I think his floor elsewhere would be 1.2 and um, he's 26 years old. He's won three competitions. He could potentially win four next year. Uh, so he's still going to go down in history. And would you, would you be thinking, I sort of want to run a team by myself. 
Yeah, there's a part of that as you well. Know, like you'd be 27 when he comes off proper contract for that next year. That's another five, six years. Obviously, it's another two more contracts. And right? it depends on the sell from the other team. Mm. So if it is indeed a guy like Benji at the Tigers, um, I dare say Benji and the Tigers will be going after Jerome Hard. Um, still got that. Um, he can play seven. I reckon he's more of a seven. Same. He can just play anywhere. And appa- apparently, um, I heard more. Well, I remember when he played for the New Zealand Mould, he spoke so highly about that Benji was one of his favourite players. Of course. Going up. So he, he, that, everyone wanted to be Benji. That marriage makes the most sense for mm. me. And I think if I'm the Tigers, I'm offering him like 1.2, 1.3 to get him away from the, yeah. from the Panthers. You got it. Um, Ezra Mam, 20 years old in January. Ezra Mam's only 20. What? So he'll be 21 by the time you get him. Um, and what did you, I think it's maybe recency bias that made him take over Tommy Dearden for me, but I got him at three over Tommy Dearden. And I think either player um, is going to get – their floor is also going to be a mill in this day and age. Easy. All these guys that you mentioned, they've all got origin jerseys and they're all the face of their franchises. Mm. It's a mill. Easy. Ezra Mam, what do you do? you think he stays? I think Ezra Mam Easy. stays at the Broncos for less money. Could he play seven? I still got my question marks on that. That's the only one. I don't have a question mark over Dearden and Lawyer. I think they would be good to play seven and they can control the team. Ezra, I still need to see a little bit more. Because Dearden, Dearden was a seven. He plays yeah. six. He yeah, plays, he was. Come, come through as a seven, then he goes just a little bit wider because I don't think it's much of a change. Could yeah. you play left or right side and for, come over both? For Tommy. Like, yeah, for I mean, Tommy. for Tommy and for um, Ezra. Ezra. Okay. I don't think he, he doesn't stick on that left side. I'm pretty sure he can come off his right foot as well. I've seen more traits from Tommy to make me think that he can play seven, he's more on ball. Whereas mm. I think um, Ezra has been playing those short sides really well. Yeah. I haven't really seen Ezra flipping side just to side to, He doesn't yet. have to. He does. He pushes through the mm. middle really well and he predominantly plays left edge yeah. at a very high but clip. But that's how they get coached, right? Yep. I'm pretty sure if you said, Ezra, you're halfback, do whatever you want. Yep. You think he's capable t- of Yeah, it? he's capable of that. He's okay. just a little footballer, man. Yeah. He plays eyes up football. He just takes he just takes the line on. He's a ball runner, great defender. He'd easily play half. Mm. It's not going to change his game. And the last one, number five, is for me, but he's got a player option cheese. Number yeah. five. I'll just go to top five. Yeah, it's um, important. He's 27, it's important. He's, 20, he's 27 years old in May and he's got a player option. So I've chucked him in there. <laughs> if he does indeed take that option, I think he jumps both Tom Deard and Ezra Mim as the most um, yeah, yeah. sought after. He'd yeah, go I'll to three it. for me. Yep. Yeah. Because he's important, man. Like a great a, – a nine like him who's just a little dog who just goes at everything, plays big minutes, runs like a truck, hits like a truck. You know, like he's a great ball player. He just had a bit of like a, a disrupted season this year. The Roosters did. Hmm. What do you expect from him? What did you expect from him? I expected this. I if, expected, he didn't get, if he didn't get injured, yeah. I would have expected more. Yes, okay. But I, I did that. expect this. I agree with A that. little bit of fucking all over the shop, right? Next year I expect – the combination with Sam Walker. No excuses. No excuses there. With Sam Walker to be elite. Yep. I'm with Keary, you. Keary, elite. Collins, bang. Everybody on board. They've got so know? many good pieces. Yeah. Them and the Rabbitohs, it's it's a disservice for them if they don't go to mm. another level this year. Because they've got the forwards, man. They do. Um, Smokey, Jack Wellsby, 22 years old in March. Right. Three-time Super League winner, 100-plus games in Super League and Challenge Cup, eight tests for England. And Mace, on the weekend or, or the first game, he became England's youngest ever skipper. Uh, captain, so he? obviously he's really good leadership, really good uh, mm. team man. Um, I've liked him for a while. He's very versatile. Yeah. If you're a fucking back, great ball. Six, seven, and one. I so, think it was last week or the week before. The sorry, first I said test. Like seven, six. Yeah, he can play. Seven, he yep. can play. I watched him. Um, he threw a mad ball. I think Kohler got caught in. Mad out Over ball. the top, Tom Over Johnson. Top. I was like, holy yeah. fuck. That's He's a nice ball. Man. That was He's a nice ball. That series has been all right, man. It's a bit hard for the Tongan boys to get up over there. It's, no, what, November now? She's fucking cold, miserable. I think it was like eight degrees on the weekend, windy, how, soggy. It's how, like where else would you fucking rather not be? How hard would you be training over there, Oh, you my God. There's a lot of buffets. Get away from the boys. <laughs> and that's what, um, you know, it's probably – they're just and England aren't playing the best footy either. It's it's pretty messy over there. Yeah, it's all right. Lionel, a bit Lionel, a bit uh, Lionel. But it's just it's, they're playing to the conditions and the Pommies just they don't they got a bunch of dogs in their team as well. Yeah. All right, Mace. Let's get to the odds for the international games to finish off this series. Both teams played each other on the weekend, but we'll get into uh, how they look. Uh, I thought the Fiji. Uh, team played really well against PNG. I thought PNG were going to beat them, yeah. especially over there in yeah, Port you Moresby. Said that. But 
Fiji would be really good. Yeah. Let's start with Australia versus New Zealand. Australia are dollar twenty four favourites with our friends and our partners at the tab. Uh, New Zealand are four dollar ten. The line is twelve and a half. Uh, these odds are accurate as of the second of November at eight thirty a.m. Uh, for the Kangaroos, some big ins. Um, we we said it. Valentine Holmes would keep his spot. Hamaso's been unreal. Uh, Dylan Edwards is on the wing. So Selwyn Cobbo does indeed miss out on the Told final. Um, but uh, we have Tino for Suomala Awi and Payne Haas back into a team that already beat the Kiwis and, and Liam Martin. And Liam Martin. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. Um, and the Kiwis are as per. That's crazy. Like, they got dominated last week, the Kiwis. I'm not sure if it's just subconsciously you knew that you had to just get through the game and just let's go all in for this week. Mm. So I think you're going to see a totally different team because they played pretty poor. They did Australia. sort of blow them out right at the end as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, though. but it was just like New Zealand play their, didn't play their best didn't play their best footy. It's yeah. hard with four and it's at nine. You know, it's not a genuine nine. If they had cheese there... Be, make a massive difference. Do you think that's the difference now? Like two tries. So Benny Hunt obviously scores right mm. at the death a couple of minutes ago. And then Cam yeah. Murray, he, we talked about that's that, great, six yeah. tries in six games. Yeah. Um, he busts through at the end. So it's 36-18 realistically. It's just, it's, it was 24-18 yes. for long periods. So that's what they'll be taking out of it. Yeah. And they missed a lot of opportunities. So they just need to execute. Now it's, hey, if it's all in for the final. All they do is just get here with no injuries. Mm. That's all you'd be thinking. Probably not going to beat Australia here. Australia can just – because they're always at that level – and, you know, like they get T- Tino, Payne Haas and Liam Martin go out and you put Jake Trebojevic, Lee, uh, Collins and I think, I'm not sure he started in the other second row. But they all just, you know, just plug and place. Bang, straight in. Liam Martin, Cam Murray. Yeah, I know, but last week, who was the back rowers for a show? Oh, it was Cam uh, Murray and... At the dog of all dogs. Oh, the cotter. <laughs> the cotter, the dog, yeah. So you put those guys in and yeah. they just you just don't miss a beat. Yeah. Because Jakey's just a different sort of forward. He ain't a pain harsh that, but he just fucking cleans up everything in the ruck. Liam, uh, Big Lindsay, shout out to Big Lindsay, mm. double. Yeah, Got double. a double. Great work, big boy. See uh, Harry Graham talking about the avocados after the game as well. <laughs> avocados are going through avocados. the roof. Avocados. If, <laughs> if Payne Haas doesn't have an avocado sponsor, then Lindsay Collins should. They should, should team up together. Because of, you know, the performance of Lindsay and Payne's name, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking hand avocados. It's just works. Um, yeah, start your own business, boys. Uh, yeah, so, like, look at that forward pack. It's, it's, it's exciting. Uh, so, Ben Hunt's been starting. Tino, Payne Haas, Liam Martin, Cam Murray and Isaiah. Mm. Get fucked. It's the, be- it's the bench. Like, look at the bench. Paddy Carrigan. You miss those guys. Like those guys come off. Like I think the Jersey Flegler started. Good on him for his yeah. first cap. He's been kicked um, back. So, oh, actually. Uh, you might oh, get no, a spot sorry, on the bench. That, no, that was for last week. No? Yeah. Are you on the bench this week? Who, Jersey Flegler? Yeah. No, or he's 18th. Okay, eight so yeah. in and out. Yeah. So you're going to have Car- – you get Carrigan back on, Lindsay Collins. Cotter. Cotter. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's – what, what do you do if you're New Zealand? You just got to – what they got to do, Fisher-Harris and Liotta need to come out like they did in the grand final. Mm. They need to go up Payne, Haas and Tino. So it's a bit different trying to hit big Lindsay and Jake. It's a different sort of – like Jakey's so strong, mm. undece- deceivingly strong, right? Yeah. He always finds his front, can't really put a shot on him. You put a shot on fucking Payne Haas if you try. I think I – think, no, Moses Leota can. Oh, this yeah. ain't a, This ain't a lie. Go and do your best. Yeah. You know, but you can try and get at him. Yeah, if you're Moses Leota. Only else? Moses. <laughs> only <laughs> Anyone Mo- I'm talking. Only Moses Leota yeah. can hit Payne Haas. Yeah. And yeah. that's only just. Yeah. Um, and you can, can get it under under Tino as well. But, um, yeah, good luck. That's just me saying it. 12 and a half enough start. It. You think they're going to beat him 13 plus, um, Kangaroos? No. It's played in Hamilton, right? It is. Is it miserable? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm predicting it is. My, I'm from Hamilton. It's fucking Fem- summer, Fem- isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It should be all right. Weather zone. It should be all right. Um, England are looking to go three 0 against Tonga. Mace dollar uh, forty five yeah. favourites. Tonga are two dollars seventy. Mace, the line is six and a half. Do you think uh, Tonga can get a bit of respect and, and get the last of the three games? Do you think England will go clean sweep? Oh, England can sweep him. But Tonga's been – Tonga has so much potential. Mm. They've just been really off. They're just missing in the halves. Yeah, the they are. They are. And it's, it's telling. I mean, Lola Hare at six. I mean, 
It's just, it's just not working. Mm. Not working. He's Something, just, something's he, off a little bit. He's, he's a journeyman, good player. Played for a lot of, you know, played a lot of NRL and then heaps of Super yeah, League. Talent wise, he's. But fun. you need an emerging half here. So you need one of these either. Yeah, Katoa um, there. He's Katoa. Been you need right. Katoa to kick on and be. Because he shows signs of yeah. it. He's come from a good system. Um, Wayne looks like he's taking his time mm. with him and not rushing him as well. So Frizzell played outstanding on the weekend. Yeah. I think it's 80 minutes. His stats would have been out of control. But, you know, you got Fanua Blake in there, um, Ola Kawatu, Kaloa Matangi, uh, Harvili. There's a fucking decent team there. Yeah. You know, like a team that you look at their pack and you go, they should dominate. But it's a slow track, right? Yeah. I reckon if it was played over here, played real dry and suit. dry, it would suit the way the Tongans play. Yeah. Over there, none of these boys had about six or seven weeks off. Pretty sure they weren't doing preseason. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like – and then most of the Pommies, they've all played in – um either the grand final or like very deep runs, had a couple of weeks off and then they played. Yep. So they're match fit. Our, you know, the Tongan boys aren't match fit. So where, it's a big difference. Where is the position? Sorry, mate. It's got to... I think Tonga will get them. Actually, Tonga will get them in this last one. Yeah, nice. They'll work it out. The list, the list still haven't come out for them. That's why we can't yeah. find them. They always take a little bit longer over there for some reason. Uh, Pacific Championships. There we go. All right, the last game is Fiji versus Kumuls. Uh, Fiji were impressive. Um did a bit of a number on the on the Kumuls in the end after Kumuls started so well. Uh, do you think Kumuls can get them back? The game is again at Port Morse. They're playing each other again. Yep. Mm. Uh, our friends, our partners at the tab have Fiji, $1.62 favourites, PNG, two thirty. dollars I'm actually going to have a little bit on that. I think the Kumuls can bounce back and, and get the win over them uh, after being I don't, disappointing. I don't think so. No. Line three and a half. They look awful. I'm not sure why. Mm. And everything to play for. Um, they were all, all saying that. Like... <laughs> Do they have everything to play for? Like, I know they're home and everything like that, but they're very passionate, but you're going to play them again. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, <laughs> so I think bounce back. So one of, these, one of these teams are just off a little bit. All you have to do is be off 5% and that other team be up and you just get blown out. Because of the games like this, it's hard mm. to get up for these. I know it's a test and everyone's like, it shouldn't be hard to get up. It's like sometimes when you're playing that ne- a team the next week, I don't think I've ever been in this position before. Yeah, I can't like, think of it. I'm like, fuck, be, this would suck. Dead Rock has been an actual, that's weird, yeah. Did you not th- – when they worked this out, did they not think this was going to happen? Um, they think fucking Fiji was sure. going to play Australia in the final? No, sorry, because it's, it's Samoa, 3 Samoa, you think Samoa was going to – like, no. No. No, yeah. no okay, never. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's going to be all right weather even in Hamilton. So okay. Slight chance of rain. There's a slight chance of rain every day in New Zealand. Well, that, that, brings, <laughs> that, that brings me to my bet. Uh, my bet's friend's bet – with our friends, our partners at the tab, I'm going Joey Manu, the $1.5 million man, to score in the first 60 minutes. If you get him that deal, you're the best. And oh, he's, he's, he, I reckon he's worth more, to be fair. And I'm going to go New Zealand plus 12 and a half. So Australia have to beat uh, Australia by more than 13. Our traders at the tab have got a market of $7 for us. You can find that in our Bets Friends channel. Um, all right, Mace, and we're going to be down in Melbourne with our friends, our partners at the tab. We're going to be updating our tips throughout the day. But for the main race, the Derby, uh, 2,500, who do you like in that race, mate? I like the dad. Mm. I like okay. that. I, like, I did, I did a uh, session with uh, Braith and Asa. Shout out to Braith. Strong yep. dad. Strong so dad. I'm like the dad. That okay. Right. Little, omen, little omen. Little omen there. Love Bra- omen. Braith will be down there. Yep. Braith will be down there. So we'll catch up with the boys. Even Rent Daddy. Um, I'm going to go with Puglia. Mark Zara's on fire at the moment. Um, Riff Rocket's the favorite and deservedly so, $1.90. But maybe we get some information mm. while we're down there. Yeah, so. If you're watching us on the socials, we're well, going to be around some high rollers, Mace. We're going to be around – you always get really good mail on the day. So watch us on the socials. We'll be sharing with the Tab app, Levels Network. Uh, and if you see us down there, you've got to be in the marquee too, hot players only. There's levels for this shit. Good luck. Come and see us <laughs> uh, and, uh, and have a picture and looking forward to it. Melbourne, Derby Day, Tab, oh. Levels Network. Let's go. And as always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season and spring carnival season, Mace, racing season. So please keep front of mind, what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. See you down at Melbourne right, um, I can't wait, on the man. weekend. Pump. Let's go.